Not just a downturn, a meltdown. There's wars and rumors of wars everywhere. And there's no stopping some of these major wars that are going to happen. Jesus prophesied. And there's earthquakes, there's all these signs you see. Now what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to pray and say, well, Lord, protect me? Of course you ask for God's divine protection. But he said, occupy until I come. If that's weeks, months, or a few years from now. Occupy means you look at what's happening and you make some provision for you and your loved one or your local church, your family. We can't do it for dozens of hundreds of people. But for us, family, for Jimmy, the people you're really close to, there's two things. In the economic catastrophe, Happens. It'll be worse than 2008. It'll be worse than the Depression. It'll throw everything into, into chaos. Yeah. It's planned. They know that's how they take over. Order out of chaos. And believe me, chaos is coming. I can't, I can't put a date on it. I know people that are sure it's going to happen before this year is up. It's all building. It's all building. So here's what I propose. Pray about it. Ask God to make provision for those that you can be a help to, if we're still around when that kind of tribulation hits the fan. Yeah. Yeah. Great tribulation. Now we're not going to be here for the wrath of God. We're not appointed unto wrath. Thank God for that. Okay. Jesus took our wrath. Yeah. He took it in full. But we need to make provision. And we that's with water, clean water, or filtered water and food, stored food, in wherever we can get that, in a place where there are others that are like-minded, that at least we've made that preparation so that when it happens, we're not caught flat-footed with all the panic and the stress and the anxiety for people, I mean, within a matter of days, when it really crashes. Like Venezuela. Well. Like Venezuela. Well. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. What I was probably was aware. aware. The very recent day. And it's not due just to socialism. It's due to many factors. But that's another warning sign. Many. Nothing's alarming. Nothing's alarming. We must be aware and asking God, show me, Lord, who I need to work with on this to have at least food and water. Because food and water is going to be a commodity more important than silver and gold. Yeah, or bank account. Yeah. You know it, Jimmy. There's coming a time when they're going to change everything. It's all digital. Yeah. Yeah. All digital ID, mm. digital money, 
Bitcoin. G, G money, they call it now. Uh, looks like Bitcoin, digital currency. It's big Sweden. I think Sweden only pays for something like three percent with actual cash. Three wow. percent with actual cash. Yes, it's and, very. And very the cool. coins are disappearing. Well, that's right. And, and so are the checks from banks. So it's all going to be a digital economy once it crashes. That's how, what, they're going to say that's the only way for you to buy or sell or to exist in our new world order economy. Correct. I don't want to be a part of it. If I, I mean, if I have to wait for Ravens to show up. But in the meantime, I'm going to make some kind of provision as God provides stored food, water filter, and plenty of clean water for not just for myself for those that I can work with and that are uh, part of my family we are like the dying world too. that's right that's that's what will show the real love of Christ that's right we're willing to share with anyone but at the same time you can, you have to have once that this kind of tribulation breaks out you have to have God's guidance what to do, where to go. Yeah. Yeah. More than ever before. Yeah. You'll really train us through this. If we're living through the next few months and years, we're going to be trained what it means to be like Elijah. Because you just don't make it. You, you, you'll be overwhelmed. Everybody else in the churches and in the world will be totally panicked. It'll, it'll build in a matter of days and weeks. People will, especially those without, that didn't make any preparation. But it's not, it's not the food in the water itself. It's obedience to hear from God. He doesn't want us to be caught unaware, and we're all unaware. We're all aware. This is uh, the time just before Jesus is going to return. It's a few years at most. I, in fact, I don't mind, I tell people, even over social media, I said, I would be truly amazed, I can't set a date, but I would be amazed this world continues more than past the next decade. We don't have 10 years left, Jimmy. It's getting worse. Maybe five. Like the earth pains, increasing and exponentially. Exponentially. At the rate of doing, we don't even want to be around 10 years something. Yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine what it's going to be like. Well, they've got the whole 2030 plan, the 2020 plan, or the the UN 2030 plan. 2030 plan. Yeah, it's an agenda. Everything together. Yeah, an agenda. And believe me, it involves population reduction yeah. and full control by the elite, not just in the UN. They're in all these nations, and they control the purse strings. <laughs> But God controls the outcomes. That's what they all forgot. God's the one who is judged. He's still on his throne. And the people that don't know God think they're their own God and can get away with their own wealth and agendas, including Agenda 2030. Do you know what the Pope, when he was in the UN, and when he is at the White House with Obama, he was, the main thing he was talking about and pushing was Agenda 2030. He never mentioned Jesus once. He never even mentioned God, but once. You saw it. It's on a video, okay? God raised his hand like this before the whole UN. God, the triple six. Not okay. Not gay okay. But never had anything to share the gospel, never mentioned repentance, never mentioned uh, what a mess the world is in, basically saying, well, let's get together and be unified and we'll save the world because we have the answers. Forget about the Bible. All the Christian movements like Rick Warren, uh, Bill Johnson and Bethel Church, they're all teaming up. You know, you see them with, Many. The, with the Pope, with Kenneth <laughs> Copeland, with Benny Hinn, with I mean, all these, all these, all the white, all all these lying yeah. shysters, you know, prosperity gospel, health, wealth gospel. He's done the research. They, you know, they're all doing a teaching schools of supernatural ministry, trying to teach supernatural gifts, which is, I mean, if you know your Bible, you can't learn a gift. 
That's what it's called. The it's gift a, is yeah, given to those who have the grace. Yeah. And we offer the gift. And they misuse Mark 16, saying these signs will accompany Come. those who believe. That's they right. will cast out, and they will do all these different things. So now that's this whole signs and wonders movement. Yeah. They base it off that one verse and say we can all heal, we can all prophesy, we can all do these things. They don't. They don't do that. Yes. And it's, it's wrong. We, yeah. Paul was very clear. We all have different gifts, but of the same spirit. Mm -hmm. yes. We don't all have the gift of healing. We don't all have the gift of prophecy. Preach it, brother. You know, and prophecy is not the same today as it was back. There's no Jeremiah's. There's no, you know, people like that. Prophecy is the building up of one another. Prophecy or maybe is getting the, I mean, it's edification, it's sanctification, and it's call to repentance. This is not a preacher of repentance right here. Simple gospel, simple scriptures, never deviates, yeah. and we should never deviate. We need to tell people that that's the first step in your salvation. Because when it comes to the Bible, it, uh, Romans 12, 1. We say to the body, I live in secret place. Oh, John yeah. the Baptist. Yeah. And then Jesus took up that same message. Give it to the Bible. The Lord... Jimmy, what, what do you have to say? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm wrong. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> On this one. Uh, okay. Jimmy's seen it in the business world as much as anybody you will ever meet. He's seen plenty of it. He's seen pretentious Christianity. He's seen false Christianity. He's seen how the big corporate world operates. And it's all money, vanity, and do your own thing, pretty much. But you call, he calls people out of the world to come to Christ in his kingdom. But most, especially here in Cebu. Especially here. What I sense is people are, they listen to the Bible, to the gospel, out of intellectual curiosity. Yes. Yeah. And then afterwards, they don't read the Bible anymore because they don't understand it. Very true. That's the sad reality. That's the sad reality of most people think that they are, you know, they're godly, having a form of godliness, but denying the power they're yeah. 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 Honor them with their lips. Yeah. Yeah. Honor them with their lips. The heart is far from them. <laughs> Never deny the power of the gospel, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Why was the Holy Spirit sent into the world? To convince and convince the world of sin, Righteousness, God's righteousness, and the church. And if you, any one of those three, if you throw those out, you don't have the Holy Spirit in your ministry, your preaching. The Holy Spirit, clearly, Jesus said. So that's what we need to be focused on. Even if it, it's like, uh, oh, that's old fashioned. That's too condemning. That's too hard. <laughs> Nobody preached harder than Jesus or John the Baptist. Brother. You read it. You know. Yeah. He challenged the religious leaders. He challenged the lost. And he had mercy for the sinner in the synagogue to beat his chest. Yeah. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, the sinner. Have mercy on me. But the, the Pharisee, he went away at empty. Conviction. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit. And then there's the gifts, of course. The gifts are wonderful. But this is beyond gifting. This is the whole ministry of salvation in the gospel. Like Mike Bickle and IHOP teaching that you can prophesy and be wrong 80% of the time. No. Is he on record saying that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mike, he has a huge mega church and big following. Mike Bickle of IHOP, International House of Prayer. Uh, that's part of Kansas City. Yeah, the, the, Kansas City prophets. The Kansas Paul City Kane. false prophets. The, Paul Cain, an adulterer, a homosexual. He had to come out and admit he was a homosexual. But he was a great prophet in the school of the Kansas City Prophet. Now, I don't know whether he repented or not. I, I don't judge that. But to judge that being part of a so-called valid ministry, it's dangerous to depart from the gospel right there. It's dangerous. Don't do it. It's never changed. It's an eternal message for eternal salvation. 
And even if the world gets tired of hearing it and plugs their ear or tells you, go away from me, I don't want to hear any more of that, you tell them anyway. But you tell them in love. Not pointing a finger. We point a finger, we know we can point a finger in ourselves. Is that three pointing back? That's right, three back. <laughs> That's always a good you point. Point the analogy. finger, you got three yeah. pointing right back at you. That's the first step. And nobody can repent unless we're convicted. Yeah. Well, who does the convicting? It's the Holy Spirit the Holy that anoints Spirit. the Word yeah. and declares the Gospel and tells you if you want to be saved and not condemned, yeah. you have to repent. Never right. change. All or even the prophets. Right. First word out of their mouth. The other thing that I, I wanted just one more thing to, to go over. The spirit of this age is not just the hardened hearts and the lack of the love of many waxing cold. That's an obvious sign. Love for God, love for His Word, and love for the brother. Correct. Even love for the lost in the world. We don't love the world. We love the people that are lost in the world. So, the thing I wanted to share is, Lord, help me to get this across. The apostasy that is happening is due to self-promotion and merchandising the gospel. That's one of the reasons that drew you to our ministry. You knew everything that we do. We don't ask for donations. We don't buy or sell anything. We give it away. I, I've told, I don't know how many pastors, I put it out there on the internet so many times. Jesus clearly described the principle of God. Freely you have received, freely give. And you think God doesn't honor that? I'm proof. I know others. I'm proof. 31 years. I have a prayer, brother. I have a prayer for both. Before we give the microphone to all those who want to share, there's just a few here, because most people have very little advanced notice. But I want to thank everyone who came and sacrificed their time to be here, to remember the God of them. Because I want you to know, you're our true saint. Not just a missionary, but someone who laid down her life, the gospel. You can find that out for yourself and read her book. I, I, everybody get a copy of at least one. That's her testimony. It's all true. Some people think, oh no, she must have made some of that up. It's all true. My wife lived a supernatural life. She had a hard last year and a half. A hard last two and a half months. But God never said we were going to have a picnic or a cake walk down here. Scripture in Colossians, I maybe will share later, and also in 2 Corinthians, about filling up the sufferings of the body of Christ. And what real soldiers and called servants are required to sacrifice. It's often involved sacrifice and suffering. But I want to just pray and thank God. I want to thank God that He gave my wife 75 full years, fruitful Amen. years, mostly in health and in ministry all over Asia and all over much of America. She had 75 years. So that's what I remember in the 31 years we had together here on this mission field. And it's a hard mission field because of so much religiosity and idolatry and hardness of heart and what have you. It's a hard mission field. Any pastor or missionary, any preacher or evangelist will tell you, she was tough. She was called here on her own and came here with no church backing, no money, 
a husband that was backslidden was later murdered at her doorstep before we had to get her. She was a widow. I was sort of like, I was like a, an Elijah that needed a widow. I was one of her first rescue missions. I was a, I was a rescue mission, but I was used to rescue her also. And I want to thank God for those 75 fruitful years, everything he called her to do, and the 31 years I had to be blessed with a helpmate and a teammate, a partner for life. She knows, she may be listening right now. She may, hear, may, she may be hearing this right now. She knows that I'll never forget her. Neither will any of you that really knew her. And I will always love her. Because she loved Jesus first. She was more than a soulmate. She really loved Jesus. And was always on call 24-7 to reach the lost. Whether it was a taxi driver or a child or whoever. She was always looking for the opportunity. That's a, that's a sign of a true disciple and apostle. They're not professional. They're on call 24-7. And I saw it for 31 years. As a personal evangelist. And it wasn't, uh, it wasn't just an evangelistic thing. It was, shake, it was sharing from her heart. Her testimony and the gospel. Everywhere. Rarely was Lynn was childlike. You know that. So she related to the Filipino children at the Jesus Praise and Worship Center for 13 years. Jimmy was a big part of that. She loved the Filipino children and the Filipino people and always related on a childlike level. She was never above them. And she was a realist, she had discernment. But Love is what breaks down the barriers. Love and truth. And let me draw sharing that. She was always sharing from her heart love and truth. So I just want to say I'll always miss her until we're re reunited. This is a lost child found at eight years old and then in her 30s, her late 30s. You can read about it in the book. It's a, it's a tremendous testimony that she was very lost, very desolate, a very difficult to understand. She, she felt uh, abandoned as an early child. She was uh, never really accepted. For a season, she wasn't in some churches. But because she had this prophetic calling, Lynn was the most unique personal evangelist and missionary you're likely ever to meet. And she called a lot of pastors, a lot of churches, both in America and in the Philippines, being a witness 24-7, a worshiper and a warrior in prayer. And the thing I remember most about Sister Lynn that I, I carry with me the most is the many times she called me to bring a prayer with her. And the many times we would sing Christian songs and choruses together in the presence of God, which was just the two of us. Or we'd listen to Don Moen or something on the internet or something on my laptop. We always, I'm going to give you this, this is a big key, listen please. You want to have more victory in your Christian life. This is the key we found out. It works. Constantly have praise and worship music in your home. Not she did. Rio is over there. She's over there. She knows. We all should know that. That if you have worship music, even if it's just heart music, but music that focuses the mind and the heart, the one we're constantly to be serving and worshiping. Do that and you'll be blessed. Thank you all for being here.
I think I will call Sister Rega to say something. I didn't prepare anything, but I have to speak for my um, students, like my spiritual mom. So we go a long way, 2000. I was just reminiscing last night. I remember when I was a little kid, and um, Brother Len and Sister Lynn used to live in Beverly Hills with Uncle Charlie. And I was nine years old or eight, I don't know, I was so small. But I just go into the room and I say, hey, what is that? You know, being collect. And I didn't know that they have been praying for me ever since that first time that we met. And, you know, years gone by, I don't know, I haven't seen them. And I got to know the Lord when I was 18, when I was in college. I was feeling empty and depressed and I... I was invited to a church uh, in Manila, because uh, I studied in Manila, and I felt that there was the, God was calling me, and I accepted the Lord. I became a Christian, but not only until I came back to Cebu after college and met Sister Lynn again, and underwent a very deep discipleship process with her for years. And every Sunday, I'd go to their house. I look forward to our Sundays because we can worship and she would teach me the word and she would personally disciple me as her own child and I cannot rem I cannot imagine what kind of a Christian I would be now if not for her because she molded me um, and the spiritual truths that she taught me was unlike any other. I mean, I don't want to compare but the depth of my walk with Jesus is as it is because of the example that she has um, put, uh, laid before me. Um, I cannot forget that there were times in the middle of the night she would dream that I was in a very, I was going the wrong direction of my life. And she had very prophetic um, visions and she was so intimate with the Lord that every decision I made that was wrong, before I could tell her, she knew it. She's that close to the Lord. Amazing. It's amazing. And then during our meeting, she would tell me that this is her dream and that I did I do something that week. And I'm like, how did you know? <laughs> Even if I don't tell her, because her walk with the Lord was so strong that when she disciples me, it's like she's she's there. Like um, it's like I can't explain it. She's like the voice of God in my life. Basically, that's it. When I was struggling in my faith and when I was a baby Christian, she was there, and and I'm very thankful for her example. And I don't know what kind of life I would be without her. And so to honor her. Um, I commit to, I commit to, to really be a faithful witness to the Lord, and to Man. reach more souls. And I know that I'm doing it now, and I have a lot of victories in that in my ministry and my family life. But I can never compare with the depth of faith that she yeah. has. It's like so amazing. She would continue to be an example for me, and I will continually put her as an inspiration for me to walk deeper in my faith, to honor God, and to never fail Him as much as I can. You know, yeah. we're all human, but yeah. but she will serve as my inspiration. And I will honor her life by making sure that everything she taught me will be multiplied and thousands or how many lives can also impact through her example. So that's my commitment. So honor Sister Lynn, my special mother, I'm going to really do my best, with God's grace of course, to fulfill his mission in my life and reach more souls for the gospel and for the kingdom. Because that's her mission in her life. She will live for the Lord and I will do my very best to do the same. And I want to thank Brother Lynn and Brother Jimmy and the entire family for being patient and being there for her all these years. 
I know I haven't been there because of circumstances. You have you you your own life. Yeah, you never of course, I never forgot. And in fact, every time I share my testimony, I always mention Sister Lynn because she was a huge part of my faith and my walk with the Lord. And the story will not end. Her life is, you know, her life is a, uh, it's like a fruit. It's like, like it will bear even more fruit through the lives that she has touched. Millions of lives, I'm sure. They may not all be here today, but I am sure all the seeds that she has planted in every person she's talked to or discipled or mentored will go a long way. And I'm also excited for her that she will finally receive all the treasures and rewards in heaven. I'm sure right now she is rejoicing at Jesus' feet. She's yeah. been waiting for this moment, I mean, yeah. for years. She's been wanting to go home to Jesus. She's been wanting to, to be at His feet and to just worship Him and to be in His presence. And I know she's so happy right now. And I just um, pray that there will be many more of us who can follow her example while we are here alive. And I, I, I just want to um, thank everyone also for honoring her and for for being there for her. She's such a unique um, example and I'm so thankful that I was chosen by the Lord to be her disciple. Amen. So thank you. Amen. That's so special. Amen. Sister Lynn Malato making uh, a dinner feast yeah, for Rhea and Alexis, usually was there also. The two prominent daughters of two prominent families, and she treated them just like she would the poor. But she knew she had a mission to reach them, to be a blessing to them. She wanted to sacrifice whatever it took. And Maria is a real witness for the Lord. And thank God that's fruit in that they were. And many, many hundreds, I would say thousands of children, and hundreds of others, and Jimmy, hundreds of thousands of gospel seed, the gospel message. This, by the way, is the first track we ever printed in, in the Philippines. And you're welcome to take that home also. This was distributed to anyone that could read English. Jesus said, you must be born again. And there it is. Very clear. So, that's our message. It's your message. You love the Lord. And make Jesus a priority. He's not an appendage for our life. Yeah, I know there's some here who really know that. Jesus is just not something else in our life. He's top number one all the time. And any time we find that Jesus is not where he should be, number one, we say, sorry Lord, I want to put you, I want to keep you there. Because that's the kind of world we're living in. To test, to see whose love is real. Thank you, Brother Ned. Thank you so much, Sister Rhea. Um, Actually, right now, her sister and sister Carol is watching us over Facebook. Um, and while I was uh, live uh, streaming, and then Carol, and just, uh, Carol, sister Carol, pulled up, so she's live right now. And one of those, aside from Rhea, I think we have to thank also um, Jonah May Walter. She's all the way from Canada. She sent this, uh, you know, um, flowers. And as much as she would like to be here. Um, she wanna, you know, send her. She's another spiritual daughter. Yeah, she's one of. I think there are only top three girls. She always mentioned Raya, Alexis, and Jonome. <laughs> Every time we discuss Raya, Jonome, and, and and Alexis, those are the top three girls. She always mentioned to me. Every time we discuss. Sons, brother, they're all daughters. <laughs> yeah, daughter, daughters. <laughs> right, uh, but. Anyhow, um, this uh, next um, person I'm I'll be calling to you know to, to, to give some um, testimonies how the Lord touched his life um, through Sister Lynn, of course. And I don't want, I don't know exactly what's what's going on for for how long, but he will he is really um, more than willing to to give his testimony. Brother Jimmy, 
<laughs> He's the first one who arrives here very early. <laughs> Amen. Jimmy's been our partner for 30 years. I, I was about to go home when I came here <laughs> because the guy said that uh, the week would be tomorrow. <laughs> and thank God somebody told me that uh, it's upstairs. So, uh, at any rate, uh, I just, I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not in the office to rumble on for even an, an hour or more. <laughs> when I start sharing the word of God, we can continue like <laughs> there's no tomorrow. So, to, to shorten everything, because I was thinking that uh, uh, a lot of people would so like to share, I just yeah, prepared a okay. uh, short uh, sharing of uh, Sister Lynn. It is a sad day for those of us who have been touched by Sister Lynn's life and ministry. Yet it is a happy day for the angels and saints in heaven. As Sister Lynn is welcomed by the Lord Jesus and by her Heavenly Father in heaven. I have known Sister Lynn for the past 30 plus years. She was introduced to me by Betsy Briones, my first spiritual elder sister, who was the first one who encouraged me to read the Bible. What impressed me most about Sister Lynn was that she not only did, she, she not only knew the Bible so well, but she also memorized verses and chapters of the Bible. But most of all, she leaves out the word of God. Yes. As a young Christian, that impressed me a lot. Through the years, the first impression I had of her became a lasting relationship that I got involved in with Len and Lip Sister Lynn's ministry uh, way back for the last, I guess, 31 years. They not only have a deep love for the Word of God, but they also have a deep love for the poor, for the rejects of society, for the persecuted body of Christ, for the Jews, but also for our city and for our country. She was often misunderstood by others. But like the Bible that is often misunderstood, but will start the test of time. Sister Lynn too is now standing with the saints in the company of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ and our Father in heaven. Yes. We are here not only to say our final goodbye, but I look at this occasion as our send away party for Sister Lynn, so that we will have a welcome home celebration, which I'm sure Sister Lynn will be leading when our, when our tour will come and our loved ones will also say the final goodbye to us. There is a very thin line separating between tears of joy and tears of sadness. Meditating upon this verse, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. What is precious in the sight of the Lord should also be precious in the sight of his saints, and that is us. Our tears of sadness here and the tears of joy in heaven. And if that is one tear I would like to believe that God will not wipe away, but will be kept in the battle, in the battle of remembrance. Len, you, are no long, you, will, you can no longer hold Sister Lynn's hands, but Jesus is now holding her hands. Your loss, our loss, is heaven's gain. I will miss the many delicious meals she used to prepare for them and me every weekend when we have our fellowship. But knowing Lynn, I believe she'll be part in the preparation of the feast in the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. I also believe she's not only walking right now in the streets of gold, not only is she enjoying her mansion that the Lord Jesus promised all of us believers in John 14, but she is also involved in the final taxes of our mansion that is promised to all of us followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Temporarily, it is a sad day to all of us, but I look forward with joy and excitement to our brand new reunion with Sister Lynn, when we can finally and truly say with Sister Lynn, God is really, really, very, very good. Uh, Brother Len, uh, I don't consider you anymore as an American missionary. <laughs> but uh, 
from this day on, I consider you more as a Filipino, Cebuano, Christian, but yeah. Russia. I'll go with that. Huh? We are now your family. Yeah. Amen. He all, she always mentioned Pastor Derry, Father Jimmy, uh, of course, Maria. This, she has the list of people that, she, you know, she wants to... She has this burden in her heart and at this point I would like to ask Pastor Derek to, to give us a you know a, a message, short message and yeah. I thank the Lord for giving me the opportunity to meet the Hagans. They're not just a, a friend but a family. Uh, a mentor uh, like Brother Ruel said, Sister Len, treat me as her son. I was hospitalized two times and I feel the, the love, the care. And she always texted me and asked me, Kumusta na daw ko? I will miss her. Salamat ug dako sa Dios sa kay gayonan nga the time nga naa siya sa ospital one time nagi ko visit kay di ko gusto makita sa iya bang naa siya sa kahimtang bang kana bang higda kay pag visit na mo ko ni Pastor Romy ni Brother Will sa community nakita na ko yang kondisyon Kahilak ko, kumut kay dili siya ingon anak every time makakita ko niya dili siya ingon anak bang nagluya ko ang yun siya kanang dasig pero mi kaniya every time magistorya mi iya juko ng encourage yun niya padayon bisag unsay na itabo sa atong kinabuhi padayon lang during the time nga uh, I was so depressed because of my illness. Sige siya, text na po. Sige siya, huwag ko. Kumusta? Ako sige, replyan niya. Ako sige, ingnan niya. Kaya nang please pray for me. Tungod kay, kuhan ka nang, kuhan kay Koron ka na bang na-depress ko. Tungod sa akong kahintang din. Uh, last October, namatay mo yun akong mama. Yeah. Last year. Last year. Na kuhan siya mayong uh, ka nang, Kung naalam ko na siya sa akong kilid, iyan ko na kong, iyan ko na kong ihag. Muna, hindi na kong ma, malimta ni Sister Lynn. that I, uh, we, we really went to Brother Len and Sister Lynn for counsel before my father, before Pastor Dick, before we get, decided to get married because, you know, they've been in the ministry for how long and then they can have a lot of inputs. So before my wedding, they prayed for us. And after our wedding, we came back again. And, and ever, if we have something that we discuss, we tell it to them because, you know, they're not just married couple. The give things and God used them to counsel. So and I, I believe that and God used really um, for me. Um, at this point, I would like to ask um, brother. I forgot the name. 
Where's Sean? <laughs> I just met him tonight, but I believe he has something to say for us. What's what's in it? What's in his heart? Brother Sean? Um, I, I might not know Len and Lynn quite as long as a lot of you guys. When I first met them, I was at a church uh, to possibly do some training for evangelism, and I saw these tracks, and I really liked the tracks because that's what I've got a heart for, and it was uh, Clear Light Ministries, so I said, i got to get a hold of these guys. They've got a heart for God, and i got to meet these guys. And... Um, and uh, and so I met Len and uh, Lynn. So you know we're not professionals. We don't have a professional <laughs> audio system. That's obvious. <laughs> but we have a professional going with you. That I'm very happy about. Go ahead, bro. So I remember the first time I met them, and, and they shared their hearts with me, and I, I had a friend, and I said, you've got to meet uh, my new friends here. So we went over. And Lynn shared her story, which I think is a lot in her book, and I can remember we just sat there and listened to Lynn speak for about four straight hours. It was amazing. Uh, it, it was really, we were just glued, we were just amazed at, at the, the, the work uh, that God had been doing through her and Lynn in the Philippines, and I just fell in love with these people. I was just amazed, and as I got to know them, we started... Uh, going to house fellowship with them and worshiping God together and learning together and it was a really wonderful experience and Lynn truly was gifted um, she I don't know if it was a vision a dream or a word of knowledge but she said you know you've got to you've got to worry about there's some women in your life <laughs> I, I don't know what it is, and I didn't know because I wasn't dating anybody. And she said she had a, a vision of a woman with a broom or something that was going to cause problems. And sure enough, weeks later, uh, the housekeeper where I was, she started telling lies. And the police were going to take a picture of me and frame me uh, fraudulently. And I came back and I told her about this, and it was with some other people they'd had. It was really amazing it was a prophetic uh, kind of warning she gave um, she was truly gifted uh, they told me stories of their outreach with the children and how God had multiplied food to, to feed the many children because they didn't have enough and they always just shared their love for God and how God was using them for the people in the Philippines and I know right now Lynn is at Jesus side her reward is great in heaven, and I know we're all going to see her one day. And it'll be great to see her face to face again, and we can all rejoice and love the Lord together. So I'm happy she's in a better place now, but we're going to miss her on earth here. So thank you. Amen. Sister Lynn, she has done so much in the last 31 years. 
being a minister, being a missionary here in the Philippines, particularly here in Cebu. So Lord, this is a way of thanking you, Lord. She's going back to you right now. She's safe in your arms. We're here right now, and I pray, Lord God, even before we start this service, uh, that uh, you comfort Brother Len. Uh, be with him, Lord God, uh, from this day on. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Sister Lynn. Yes. And today, Lord God, we want to honor her and we want to thank you also, Lord God. And this service is dedicated to her. And we thank you also, Lord God, that you have you have allowed Sister Lynn to minister to so many people. Thank you, Lord. Right Lord. So, Lord, have your way. We invite the Holy Spirit. Be yes. in control of the whole service. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's continue to sing. And let's continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. One of her of one of Sister Lynn's favorite songs, When We See Christ. Page number 18. When we see Christ. Amen. Amen. Of times that they seem long, our trials hard to bear. To complain, to mourn, more and despair. Our Christ will soon appear to catch His bride away. When 
when we see Christ just over in the glory land. Amen? Amen. Uh, one more chorus. I can't sing it, but I know you can. We all know it. I love you, Lord. And yes. Lord. Let's all sing. Do we love the Lord? Amen. Oh, yeah. Sister Elaine, I know when she was alive, she has a very deep love, an intimate relationship with our Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's sing this all tonight together. I love you, Lord, my She's a missionary, she's a teacher, she's a counselor, an evangelist, a helpmate, and a beloved servant of Christ. For how long? For more than 30 years. Actually, 45. For, yeah, 45. I'm sorry, 45 years. And for 45 years, she's been through a lot, through ups and downs. But one thing is for sure, she did not give up until the yeah. end. Yeah, man. Of her bread. Amen. Amen. I, I am presenting to you some of those pictures. I'm really sorry, but these are just the pictures that I you know I was able to look into with Pastor Derek as well. And I think these are one of those moments while she's still alive. And this will be part of her legacy. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven when Jesus is my portion? A constant friend is he, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eyes on the sparrow. And I sing because I'm happy, I sing because I'm free, His eyes on the sparrow, and 
I know He watches me Whenever I am troubled Whenever clouds Suzanne Carter, that's her maiden name. Young is the Christian husband that she lost uh, through murder, murdered in 1988. Seven months later, we were married and she is Lynn Humble. God confirmed many times that she was destined and I was destined to be with her. Amen. It's in the book. It's documented. It's not imaginary. Then Suzanne Hummel. All her life she was a carter but she felt rejected. She felt abandoned. She felt no one really wanted her. But God wanted her and drew her. And I always wanted her and loved her. Because I knew the first time I met her in 1985, I knew she was God's servant, I mean unusual God's servant. And she would sing in a very large, famous chorus in Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix First Assembly. Big orchestra, she was in that chorus every single service. And she stood out like a light. She was the first one to raise her hands. And you could tell she was singing from her heart. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. Amen. 
we owe to Him more than you can know. Because you cannot save yourself. Neither religion nor all your efforts or try to be so righteous. It's His righteousness. It's His sacrifice. And any sacrifice we make for Him is only our reasonable service. Please remember that. She was a missionary all before I was. She was a teacher. Teacher of the Word of God. Loved the Word of God. Knew it. Memorized it. Quoted it. A counselor especially to pastors and women. She was always ready to counsel. And her counsel she, she really tried to be always edifying and encouraging, but sometimes we all need correction too. That's part of counseling. Lynn was an evangelist, but she did, she did uh, larger evangelism meetings from time to time, some open meetings, but she was a primary, very anointed, personal evangelist, which we should all desire to be. It's not just the missionaries or the so-called professionals or the clergy. We are all called to be a personal witness and evangelist. Amen. And oh my, I help me. Right down the street here, on the way over here, I saw it again. Help me incorporate the big sign. Just a few blocks. Lynn was a helpmate because she knew her place. She never tried to usurp the authority of husband or pastors. She respected God's government and Satan hated her for that because so few do. Let me say that again. Lynn never wanted to usurp the place and authority and leadership of men husband, elders, pastors. That's in the family and in the local church. She knew she'd get chastened if she tried. And she knew it was not of God if she tried. That's being a helpmate. I was really privileged to have helped me for 31 years. There's so few of them around anymore, especially in America. I mean, there's women that know how to be empowered and know how to be liberated and what, what have you. She was servant helpmate. Helpmate and most of all, a beloved servant of Christ. The Lord Yeshua, Hamoshiach, means the Messiah. There's only one Messiah. It saves and redeems. It's for his beloved servant. He's home now with Jesus with great reward and for much fruit and sacrifice and many good works for his king, for the king and his kingdom. Amen. Everything that she left all I did too, but only because I knew God was in it. She left all. And she, she, more than once. And she had to overcome a lot of fears because of the many traumas and trials she faced. Sacrifice is the sacrifice of love because of who he is and what he has done. Never be or to withdraw your love or privilege or honor in sacrificing something in your life for the Lord Jesus Christ and His kingdom. Because His kingdom is coming back to earth. Uh, yeah. when, when there's going to be devastation in the world, the darkness, the wickedness, religion will not save you. Uh, uh, 
Christ from here to here will save you. We owe him everything. No matter what the sacrifice might be. Don't be afraid of sacrifice. It'll make you better. All sacrifice and suffering will make you either bitter or better. You can write that down. Even this, this will make me better. We go on in spite of whatever the devil throws at us. We go on in spite of any hurt or wounding. We go on. Because for his witnesses, his warriors, and his worshipers in the earth. Jude 24, 25 says it all. She is safe in the arms of Jesus. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to be found. Now, and at the hour of your death, or the transition called the rapture, which is real, don't anybody ever lie to you, there's no rapture. There is a resurrection and a rapture. Paul saw it, and he declared it. And we who are his servants, we declare it. There is a time when we are out of this world permanently. No longer is in, in an earthen vessel, but a glorified vessel. This is her earthen vessel. Her spirit and her soul is with the Lord. Amen. Paul says it. It's in the New Testament. It's a promise. But these mortal remains will be quickened along with all the saints because the dead in Christ will rise first. She'll go up in her body Amen. first before we do. But when he returns, it will be the most glorious event of all history. Praise God. The only thing to compare with it is the resurrection of Christ himself. But remember, that's his body going all the way back to Adam and Eve and Seth and Abel. Sister Lynn was a unique lady, missionary, and person. Everybody that knew her, they could, they could always say, I never knew anybody like Sister Lynn. She was a little weird at times. And one of the reasons she seemed a little uh, more than weird sometimes, she was sensitive to spirits. She was sensitive to the spirit. She didn't get, always get it right. She wasn't perfect. But because she realized that there is a spiritual battle going on for souls on the earth every single day, that sobers you up. It's not religion. It's not imaginary. Satan is real. His minions in the earth are real. There are wheat and there are tares. And as long as we're wheat and witnesses, we're in, a, we're in a battle. And don't forget it. If you're, if you're not in a battle, tell God, I want to get back on the front line. I want to be in the battle. I don't want to be in always the comfort zone. And there's, there's time God gives us relief. And we can have all the joys of enjoying life and family. But our primary need, our primary reason we're here, is to be a witness and a warrior in prayer and a worshiper of the Lord. He's looking throughout all the earth. Who is really my worshiper? Who really loves me? After I gave my son after I made the ultimate sacrifice, who really loves me and worships me for having done that, the Father says. And let us be, let be said of us, we are his worshiper, number one. We're a warrior because 
We don't go along with the world. We're in this world, but not of this world. Amen. Oh, that's important. And then, when you have those first two, you are his witness. Right. Amen. Forget about how many times Satan will attack you. Or what sacrifice may be required. Remember that Jesus is the only door to heaven. Amen. There's no other way. Amen. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care your denomination right. or how good you think you are. Nobody can stand before holy God on their own terms of righteousness. That's why Jesus had to come. Amen. Amen. Nobody ever made a greater sacrifice than he did. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Amen. Praise God. Are we all blessed? Amen. Lynn Suzanne Carter Young Hamel, born March 3, 1944, October 22, 2019. She went with our Savior now. She's in good hands. She's safe in the arms of Jesus. A missionary, a teacher, a counselor, an evangelist, a helpmate, a beloved servant of Christ. Home now with Jesus with great reward for much fruit, sacrifice, and many good works for the King and His Kingdom. June 24, 2014. Bye. <laughs> Makita na ko siya na ito na time ay ako nga imagine siya ang face pa nga hindi pa yung ganito siya then nahira siya ka itong for a third time ako nakaat ko sa ilahag ng mga lalilis ato na time is the number of ah, sa ni ah, gigita din niya kung kailang the first time na nabuo siya dito sa Pilipinas, then unsa niya ito kung niya dili, then dito sa sa Amerika sa yung family, unsa niya ito kung siya naik dito sa yung first husband sa kan husband yung gigita sa kan gigit, and then um I'm I'm thankful sa Hamal family kay when ako si Pastor Larry at kasaki they were there to support us to encourage us Mr. Lake always and she's always texting Pastor Larry encouraging words praying for him and the family that's all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So that was Sister Karen. Let me just add something. It's so important. What just came to me as she was testifying. And that is that love and brokenness is the doorway to holiness and use usefulness in God's kingdom. Now we like to think we can go through life not broken, not a lot of tribulation, not a lot of sacrifice. But if you want to be used for eternal reward and to be used to reach souls, not for a religion, but for Christ, there will be brokenness there will be love that brings the sacrifice and the brokenness. But from that comes wholeness and usefulness and fruitfulness. And many people never really grasp this. Yeah. It's sad because they think, I'm here to live my life for my family and have a good time 
and do whatever I can squeeze out of life. That's not it. You're here to prove your love to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you prove that, and you prove that test, you'll be welcomed with open arms. Amen. No matter what you have to go through. In this world, you will have tribulations. But be encouraged. Be of great cheer, for I, Jesus said, I have overcome the world. Amen. He overcame hell, sin, and death for you and for me. You will never forget that. That's why we love Him and praise Him for us. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. But us would seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bring me run the race. Amen. Hallelujah. Number three and last, everybody sing. Come on. Life's day will soon be over. Oh, storms forever past will cross the great divide to glory safe at last. We'll share the joys in heaven, a harp, a home, a crown. The tempter will be banished, we'll lay our burden down. Everybody sing that. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of His dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we. Christ, so bravely run the race till we see Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say a special thanks to those from Corita and Thompson. Yeah. They came here, they'll be at the burial. They came nearly every night, those that could. And I want you to tell everybody in Corita that we will have the best of these memorial services uploaded to Facebook and to my channel and to Shaq's channel and several other channels that will get out there on the internet for thousands, maybe millions, because it's going to, it's going to be a masterpiece. It's going to be something very beautiful and touching when we get it all put together. So, those of you from Carita, and your children, all of you that worked with her, or were part of her ministry and benefited from her ministry, our ministry, you are the reason she sacrificed and left everything. The world doesn't care anything about you. They think you're at zero. <laughs> You're not just poverty or below poverty, whatever else. You're nothing to the world, but to God. Remember the sacrifice. It's for you. And it was Jesus that compelled her to do it. Her heart was for the poor. Mine also. We'll minister to anyone. God opens the door. We were at the Joseph Casano Memorial. We were at his bedside. Chungwa. We, we minister at the lowlier mansion. We'll minister to anyone. But God sent us to the poor. Amen. And the meek are hurting. And I'm so thankful he did that. 
Because God's heart is for the oppressed and the needy. And for those of this world that are the outcasts and the, the world doesn't really care about at all. But Jesus died for you as much as he did for me or Donald Trump or anybody else if they get saved. And many of the high and mighty do not get saved. Jesus warned about that. But if you have a humble heart and you acknowledge your need before the one and only Savior that can open for the heaven, God will fill that vacuum in your life. He will use you for His glory and there will be reward in His kingdom forever and ever. Some have great reward, some have lesser reward. But we're here not for the reward, we're here to honor Him. Amen. Not just His memory, Amen. we're here to honor Him in His kingdom and say and declare everywhere we can, Jesus is the door, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life, eternal life. And no one will ever be reconciled to God, the Pope or anyone else, except by He. He who said, I am, I am. I, said, I am the way. Nobody else could ever say that. He said, I am the way. I'm not the way. You will never meet anybody or know anybody that's the way. Keep declaring it, brother. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no way. We detour yeah. from that basic, this is a real preacher and evangelist right here. Full of zeal. The simplicity of the gospel. And loves the Lord. And loves the lost enough to be out on the streets every chance he gets. So, but pray for our closing prayer. prayer. Thank you, God, for your glory, for your honor, for tonight, Lord Jesus. You may be glorified. This is our last night that we sister Lynn She will be with us, Lord God. I know that she's safe in your arms, Lord Jesus. I want to thank you, Father God, for your mercy, for your love. I thank you, God, for everything that you gave us, the bonus blessings, and everything, Lord, that you have been with us, Lord, for starting the day that she was in the hospital. And even tonight, Lord, God, that you are always with us, Lord, God, guiding us. And even, Lord, God, gave us all the provisions. And even, Lord, God, the strength to continue, the strength, Father, God, and the sound mind, Lord, God, to thank you, Father, God. And even, Lord, God, sing the gabi on karon. Ikaw, Dios, matapay lunas ka na sa upang katulog, ang matulog mga adlawa. Lord God, Ikaw may Maya, Ikaw may Lord God, may Maya, Ikaw Dios among pastumas na. And as you close with prayer, we start thanks to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all sing one more song. You are my hiding place. Amen. That's one of our favorite songs. Ito na na siya sa sa kwarto. Kwa na siya. You are my hiding place You always fill my heart With songs of deliverance Whenever I am afraid I will trust in you You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Ah uh -huh.
is the Savior of my soul, my Jesus, my Jesus, is the Savior of my soul. Is the Savior of my soul. Is the Savior. Is the Savior of my soul. My Jesus. My Jesus. Is the Savior of my soul. He's the Savior of my soul. Jesus. 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 In moments like this, I sing out the song. I sing out a love song to Jesus. In moments like this, I lift up my hands. I lift up my hands to the Lord. Sing, I love you, Lord. Sing, I love you, Lord. Sing, I love you, Lord. Sing, No. Uh -huh. 
Kung ano naman guys, nakailan si Sister Nusag yun, si Sister Narda, kung nagabi na yung pagbako ka ron, tungkol kay, for 12 years, she was with Sister Lynn, tabang nila, especially for Sister Lynn. Our closest companion, her interpreter. Her interpreter. I'm so glad she could be here to sing that song. All right. At this point, I would like to ask Brother Lynn, because later on, on uh, um, they have to say something for the for for the brethren, yeah. for everybody, and of course for those people who are watching us right now. Uh, we're live actually in Facebook. I want to thank you all for taking the time and the trouble to be here. It's an honor that you could find the time to honor the saint. Now I'm broken for the last time. But out of brokenness, he always brings healing. Jesus. And I'm held up by your prayers. Because there's no one else like Sister Lynn. I've had to endure also, I had, I had like a pneumonia or a viral infection and fever, but that's gone. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better and stronger and stronger. We remember her for so many reasons, but it was mostly her love for the children. Amen. And the Filipino yeah. people. Whatever she had to endure, she did it joyfully unto the Lord. There are too many things that flood my mind, too many memories. But I, I remember the singing in the chorus is in the prayer in the ministry to the lost that are now found. Sister Lynn was, that's the title of her book, A Lost Child Found. And she went after many lost children. That's why we're here. Not only honoring her, that's why we're still on the earth, to reach lost children. Amen. For all children in the sight of God. Hallelujah. But many are lost. And we are the ones that go out to find them. Thank you for Pastor Jimmy Valdi for being here. He was an interpreter and a part of our ministry for many years. Everyone here, I can, I can never thank you enough for being a part of our lives and our ministry. And uh, I, I thank you that this is a beautiful day. Yeah. A beautiful place to lay her to rest. Thank God. I mean, it's a miracle that we have a place, a foreigner. This is very unusual. But God knows He sent her here, even before she met me, at great sacrifice. She knew God's compelling love sent her here with hardly any money with no backing and no churches behind her. It's amazing what God did over 31 years. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. But the book is available. Lord willing, I might even write the, the sequel to that book yeah. if I have time. Good. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Yes. Amen. Praise Him amen. all ye people amen. here below. Amen. Praise amen. Father Yahweh. Son, Yeshua, and Holy Ghost. Ruach HaKodesh. That is the presence of God in the earth. Ruach HaKodesh. We call that Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. It, Ruach HaKodesh means the ever-present one, the very breath of God. And He's here. And I thank God He's here, He's with us. And he will never leave us. Alright. Thank you so much, Brother Lynn.
katong yung si GM o yung people ko, mong tag-tag sa katong yung flowers or white. Ang mga ato ta nag-tag-tag sa yung tanang na adiri ka ron. CD pala ko si. Um... Last words, I think, dapat yung, uh, Brother Jimmy, you want to say something, Brother Jimmy? Brother Jimmy, aside from, of course, Mr. Narda, he's one of those, um, been with the couple for, I guess, 25 years. 25 years. Silver years. <laughs> and the man is with them. Amen. Amen. Okay, nung dumagun sa tuntuhiga, pero bako ko naabot yun is Pilipinas, I was still a very young Christian. And... I didn't know anything much sa Bible. But uh, for those of you who are not Sister Betsy Briones, she am going to introduce you to Sister Lynn. At that time, uh, I was so hungry for the Word of God. And I started reading the Word of God after so many years that I gave my life to the Lord. I never bothered to open the Bible or even get the Bible kay kanin tinuhuan na to sa una nga <laughs> makabuang ang Bible <laughs> ano niya ma-imperno kung mabasa madali takasabot so nahadlo ko but uh, there were a few verses that I learned sa simbahan sa katulik ko na kept me going Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Amen. and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. Amen. And that kept me going for the next two years since I gave my life to the Lord. And the other verse was in Matthew 11:28. Come to me, uh, all you that labor and heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Because at that time I was also a broken person. Oh uh, yeah. And I didn't know what to do with my life. Uh, I was just floating around, so to speak, not always looking up to what the Lord wants me to do. And during that time, after I met Sister Lynn, I was still very much involved with another ministry. And after a few years, but we kept on seeing each other every now and then. I remembered we had our first meeting that I had with Brother Len at Dito Sa, what, the, 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 the Banawa, Banawak in 89. Yes, yeah. 89. So, uh, uh, it was in the apartment. Uh, uh, and we had a lot of good prayer there. Yeah. 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 Uh, so uh, that was the time that I first got involved with the uh, prayer ministry and fasting uh, with Brother Len and Sister Lynn. Uh, then after a few years, I got into I got involved with other ministries. Amen. And eventually when they, Brother Sister Len and Brother Len, started the ministry in Kareta. I felt that I was also called Amen. to be Very much your co-pastor. Uh, be a disciple. Sometimes uh was Pastor Jimmy Balde, si, uh, Sister Narda, ako yung interpret binisaya, na kato na bugos. I was holding Bible study sa men sa, uh, every midweek. Some of them, most of them are already dead. So, already gone. Already gone. Uh, so that's how I got involved. And for the next so many years, after uh, when we, they transferred to Pardo, so I was with them uh, almost every weekend. And then later on, I found out that Sister Lane was getting sick. And, you know, I. For years, you were there every weekend, and Amen. we had prayer, we had worship, we had intercession yeah. for years. For every years. weekend, Jimmy was faithful to be there with us. Mm. Amen. So sometimes, kami rin tulo. Most of the time, kami rin tulo. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, we kept it. It's us. We're two or three. I got it in my name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 It, it, was, it was really. Uh, not really a small church because three <laughs> is the maximum of what God said. <laughs> We're two or three. <laughs> it was a nice fellowship, Nindot. Very intimate, very, you know, we're accountable to each other. Yes. Which is, I'm afraid, what's lacking in the modern church today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, 
we are accountable, we're transparent, we sometimes we kept on going by the love and the grace of God. Praise the Lord! Yeah. 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 Uh, we're here and I thank, I thank everybody. I'm glad to see uh, uh, Careta people, especially now that uh, some of the women that we get get involved in, na matay na sa Sister Lita, Brother Amado, Nida, Nida, Sister Mary, uh, so many. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these are the seeds that the, the of Le, Sister Lynn's ministry. Amen. We just supported her, especially the Lynn myself. Uh, she was called to go into the third ministry and Pastor Jimmy Valde and these are the fruits. Uh, she planted the seeds of the gospel in that very hard area. And many hundreds and hundreds of children. So many children. Amen. We had feeding children by the hundreds every week. Mm. Up to 600 and more. Mm. The Amen. largest in the whole city, by the way. God never failed to provide the, the feeding Amen. program. So, I give him all the glory and the honor. Amen. And thank God for Sister Lynn's life. Praise Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Jimmy. And at this point, I would like to ask everyone for your last final, you know, before we laid her. Gabriel, katong mga kayo suuna na to. Nga gusto mo tanaw. Karil ko. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Pray, my voice. Never I am afraid. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of my Lord. I will trust in you. And let's give more time for Brother Lynn. I will trust in you. So Mike, so the pretty name of the old big say, but more time for Brother Led. I am strong in the strength of my Lord. I will trust in you. Yes, Lord God. I will trust in you. Let the weak say I am strong in the strength of my Lord. Yes, Lord God, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Lift up your name on high, Lord. This is the earthen vessel, dust to dust, that God alone brings quickening of life to the dust. But the spirit and the soul is already Amen. in the glory unspeakable, joy unspeakable, in full of glory. That's where the spirit and soul goes, absent from the body is to be present, present with, with the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, yeah. We know that. That's our promise. His word is true. Man's word, no, you cannot trust. God's word. In the word of the living word, you can trust. This is only her mortal remains. And we're here honoring her memory and all that she did for me. 
Let's make sure that our priority is what we do for the Lord. Amen. We do that for our family. We do it for the lost, for others, for loved ones. But the supreme love of our life, we do it for Him because it wasn't did for us. Never forget what He did for us. Thank you for being here. Amen. Amen. Mga bata, irog-irog. 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 Father, Yahweh, in the name of the Son, Yeshua, the Savior. Amen. In the name of the Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh.
One life, one body, many members. These are in that great gathering. Not long. No, they'll say, oh, they've been saying that for centuries. Not long, and there will be a gathering of those that sing these songs in their heart. Because he lives. Not only can I face tomorrow, I know what the future holds. Amen. Thank you all for being here.